Our topic is for the high flex learning in the new normal. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Paolo Jan F. Samson, but my students and my colleagues fund call me Sir PJ. Uh, or for my players, they call me Coach PJ. So I'm from Dimsu, South La Union Campus, and I'll be discussing the concepts on high flex learning. So our agenda for this afternoon is, uh, I hope we could uh, squeeze everything on in uh, with the time allotted, is the introduction of the concept of high flex transition excellence online. Uh, what is high flex course, principles and practices, students and faculty experiences, the needs and opportunities, institutional, student and faculty, COVID-19 consideration, COVID consideration, of course, and uh, design on how to transition, uh, transitioning excellence, on how to transition to the high flex learning, faculty development, program implementations, and afterwards we'll do the question and answer. So for ba basic concept, what is high flex basically? So um, high flex is uh, coined as hybrid and flexible learning. So basically that's that's the, the main two keywords uh, that we have there, hybrid and flexible learning. So it states there that uh, you have to consider one is the scheduling. This gives students the freedom to study when and where they want to based on their own needs, desires, and preferences. Uh, I'll get into that later on as we discuss the principles. So basically, it's our, this is just all introduction of the concept. Students can choose to take the class online, in classroom, or both. So they have the, uh, they have the freedom to choose. Also, um, course material is of course material is offered in traditional online uh, formats. Uh, that's where the the teachers would come in. Uh, you'll be content creators. Content meaning the subject matters that you'll be creating would be uh, would be available to them, both online and face to face. So that's where some of the difficulties would would lie on. And also, students can choose how they attend course weekly. Courses weekly, which can resolve many scheduling conflicts, especially this is true to schools who have a big um, uh, population of the students, uh, they can, they can have uh, alternate way of uh, learning things so they could do offline or, or both as they're given the opportunity. So high flex classes combine elements of both online and classroom based learning, they take hybrid courses so take a new level of flexibility. So basically, this gives freedom for both students and the teachers to max uh, uh, to get the full um, academic learning, and and it will be based on them whether how would they like it to take the course, um, and also the teachers they're also given the freedom as well to to give what kind of um, instructional uh, uh, what this instructional uh, type of way of delivering their concepts so it goes both ways but uh, the uh, the key factor here as we're gonna go along with the with the talk is on the support of the administration because as it is um it should be uh it, it should be taken into consideration all the stakeholders here so uh, specifically uh, it boils down to more of the technology availability of technology so if i continue so Hybrid, some students may come to campus and be in the classroom while some students may choose to stay home and learn remotely. And some students may not be able to be present in the class during specific or quarantine period. So we can't deny that there's a probability that we could, do, we could go back to quarantine again if we're gonna have level two, level three again. So there's also that possibility. Flexible, students who are home may have other familiar responsibilities, be in different time zones or be ill and have to watch a recording. So hybrid, which means that students can, uh, they have the freedom to choose whether or not they want to be at home or they could go to school. As it is, I don't know with, with, with some of you, if you have children, uh, because I, I myself, I have, I have uh, two, two uh, uh, middle school age uh, children who, who, who uh, one of them are, uh, wants to go face to face while the other one wants to stay at home. So as of now, there's an opportunity for the students to choose whether you want to go to school or uh, attend or just uh, um, do the uh, homeschooling or what you call that, the modular or online classes. Because as it is, uh, according to Howard Gardner, uh, the concept of multiple intelligence and different concept of the learning styles, that there are some students who are very good at 
as visual learners who are very good at kinesthetic learners, auditory, and different types of intelligences that some of them, they might be able, uh, they are more, more at home or they are more capable in learning while it's online. But for others, they really thrive on having the face-to-face. -face. But the, the point there is, students now have a choice. No? So, uh, 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 and also with the flexibility, um, you, I don't know if you have problems before because I had students who like, they would, be, they would disappear for one week because they have to go to like, uh, they will be brought by their parents to have a vacation or uh, or basic in one week, but and have to do the remedial activities for them. But now it's already that flexibility is already available to them. So there's no already there's no extra work they're gonna do because as it is, flexibility is available to them. So they could be in different time zone that they're gonna be in the Philippines. They could be in abroad and still be taking your classes. So. So it's it's very as it, as uh, as the word says it's very flexible. They they uh, they could adjust to the time zone. They could adjust to the time that's available for them. So so it's it's I think it's, it's better for now. So if I may hear some of you, um, do you have any experiences on the concept of hybrid or flexibility that you did uh, in this uh, pandemic last two years, or are you one of the victims who have to really do the uh, modular approach or online learning at the same time. So can you hear some of the participants who could share uh, or do you have any um, experiences that, that made it somewhat high flex? Can I have volunteers please? Meron po ba naka-experience ng somewhat high flex na yung learning nila? Hi sir, I think um, the our institution offers um, synchronous and asynchronous yeah. options for our students. So mm. we do have the online distance learning. Um, we also have the online learning as well. Mm. Yeah, I understand that because currently I'm also teaching in the, our open university system I'm, uh, because I'm also handling all the professional subjects. And I also do let review on Sundays as well. I do licensure examination for teachers. But the thing there is um, the flexibility, the hybrid part of being asynchronous or synchronous uh, is, 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 uh, is available to us. But the flexibility concept is, is still not um, really established in a way. So thank you for that, Sir Aldrin. So to continue, in a hybrid flexible or high flex, sorry. Uh, in a hybrid or high flex class, students can choose to attend class either in an assigned face-to-face -face environment or in an online environment, synchronously or asynchronously. So there's the, uh, the main concept there. It is not an online technology. Uh, that's we have to eliminate that concept there. Also, uh, there are different high flex key principles is what I'm talking about. So let me get into the specifics of the main concepts here. So there are alternatives, accessible, reuse, and equivalence. So first, real alternatives support learner, learner choice or learner control in learning. In hyperflex class, we try to provide students a choice in how they complete classes, uh, class activities, believing that when they have a choice, they, ha they, ha uh, they take on more ownership of their participation and ultimately their learning. That's especially important with graduate students or undergraduate students. But with the audience that we have right now, it's basically from the pre-LM, I believe, until the graduate school. So the type of the content and the execution objectives are also different. So it varies from uh, pre-LM elementary uh, to your uh, high school, uh, undergrad, uh, college, uh, graduate students. So there you go. So next, this uh, choices should lead to equivalent learning. The achievement of the same students' learning outcomes that identical specific instructional objectives necessarily, but all options should help students meet the same fundamental set of learning objectives for a course or a topic in that course. So may I first have the one of the principles, alternatives. 
when you talk about alternatives, basically it talks about the freedom, the freedom to choose. High flex courses must have fully developed participation alternatives, either classroom face-to-face -face and online or distance. Online participation may include synchronous and asynchronous. So it determines how much flexibility students need to adequately participate in this level of transition to location independence requiring an asynchronous online activity. So there you go. So you might have students going, uh, going, for, uh, going abroad for vacation or you have students uh, that cannot attend your class because some important function or students who are working. So there are already alternatives for them to choose. So like, for example, for first grading period, they will be for face-to-face -face online. Or for second grade period, they'll be asynchronous or they'll just depend on uh, topics available to them. So there's a flexibility on the delivery of your of your. All right. So oh, there might have been a technical difficulty. It is um, due to the internet connection. Let's just let's just wait for our speaker to be back. Um, yeah, Professor Aldrin, and this is one of the challenges <laughs> of the high flex learning. High -flex yeah, learning. yeah. Now, if you have questions from the a uh, discussion a while back you could um send it to the chat box now and then um we'll do respond to those questions after the discussion yes so we'll sir. Just wait for sir sir for dr samson to be back from where is dr samson He's from Don Mariano Marcos State University. No, I was just thinking, I am from Paranaque. The moment nag take off ang eroplano, wala ka na talagang signal. I was thinking, baka may nag take off na eroplano sa kanila. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just um, contact him for a while. So again, if you do have um, if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to send it uh, to the chat box. Yes, it's poor signal. Um, and we would also like you, of course, after our um, session. We will be asking you to turn on your cameras to have a, a photo op with our speaker. And we hope most of you will be turning on your cameras. Okay now. All right. Dr. Samson is back. Hello, sir. Welcome Hello, back. I apologize for the uh, disconnection. Uh, that's the one thing that you can control right now. Uh, uh, technical difficulties, as they would say. So I don't know where they where I stop. Maybe you can share your screen again, sir, yeah, so yeah. that we can see it. Did I go already? Did they start already with the? Yes, the sir. We finished that already. The principles. Can you go down? Okay. Certain... Alternatives. Alternatives. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I believe we're in the alternative. So there you go. So basically, the alternatives is that the students have the uh, have the freedom to choose what type of modality they'll, they'll, they'll be in. So if a student, they can plan their whole year. Like there are some students who will be um, vacationing or have to attend fam family gathering, some important matters that they, uh, they go to, like for in uh, third grading period, fourth grading period. They can already inform the teacher that, uh, sir, ma'am, I'll, I'll be out for this uh, three months, one month time because I'll be out of the country. Can I, can I be given the option to do the uh, flexible learning where I can do online courses already with our uh, subject? So, so that, that's the freedom that they have there. Or some students would have 
like they are working student or like they they are they have um uh, they were sick for some reason for that they were out so they will not be left out of the of the class so that's the alternatives there the cons uh, one of the principles of high flex learning and for equivalence equivalence meaning fairness fairness so uh, it should be taken into consideration that in terms of assessment uh, they should be uh, fairness in terms of grading your students who are doing face-to-face -face and who are doing online, asynchronous and synchronous, so that um, the, the type of uh, grades that we'll be having is uh, is fair all across. No? So alternative path in a high-flex course must lead to equivalent learning outcomes, like various participation modes we present content, engage students and assess learning with different media and activities, but all students should be able to achieve the same learning outcomes. Outcomes based on process, such as participating in discussions, demonstrating learning, should fit the participation mode rather than being forced into the same form for all. Pre-pandemic, we were all required to do the face-to-face. -face. Um, some student doesn't like that, uh, some students are independent learners, as we all know. And some of the independent learners are the ones who are very intelligent. No? So, uh, but some students are also sociable, are social learners. They can learn with, the, with, with others, uh, as uh, they say. So right now, they're given opportunity to learn on their own or with others, but depending upon the content that's given to them and being assessed properly in the same learning outcomes that they should be they should have they should have been assessed properly so learning outcomes do not change process outcomes may differ the process of learning is different but the outcomes should be there so you have to go back to your objectives of the class or the subject that you are teaching so what are the aims what are the objectives what are the goals and the goals should be the same whether or not they are face to face online synchronous asynchronous but the process as it states there that it should it's different but at the end of the day, your goals, your outcomes, your objectives are the same. Now, for reuse, reuse, which means that you can, uh, there's what you call flexibility. In terms of sexual materials and student generated artifacts from the learning activities in each participation mode, become learning resources for all students. This is uh, in terms of. Uh, the concept on technology wherein the students should, uh, the teacher rather, uh, should be creative and should be technologically driven in a way that they have the capacity to use the available resources to them. Instructional materials build once and use in all modes as appropriate. This is what I'm having, to be honest, having difficulty with. I'm teaching undergrad students who are majoring in social studies. And I, I cannot I, I cannot uh, get away from being very bookish because as you all know history is co historical concepts are are book based but the 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 challenge there is how could they present these books and get out of the concept that they are all based on modules so the challenge is to look for videos uh, in YouTube uh, that could very well help me in uh, teaching them but the thing there is they're not uh, I have to be critical over the videos that I'll be using it's it's a different thing no because when you use the uh, uh, videos uh, you should also you should be aware that um, it, it should it should be um, uh, there there's there's some commentaries that uh, should be are, are very critical for the students especially for students are very are, are radical in thinking so you have to be very careful on that and then i have to go shift my type of teaching for the graduate students for those who are taking masters and doctorates so that, that's easy for me because the type of the way you teach them is not so much very rigorous as compared to the uh, college students and i could just imagine those who are teaching high school and elementary special prelim who are doing skills based so the reuse of the type of materials that you'll be using in for, for you to give the totality of the of the concept is really 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 difficult so the challenge there is um, how can you be so creative in all of the uh, in, in the technology that you'll be using 
so that your students can really have a grasp of what you are trying to teach them. So students activity, uh, uh, capture in class, activity for all the students use and vice versa, like audio, video, text, and documents. The learning, uh, learning management system can be an extensive uh, so, uh, resource for capturing, curating, and sharing resources for all modes. And accessibility, uh, sorry, being accessible. Alternative participation modes in high flex courses must be accessible to all students. Legal requirements for accessibility for all media and activities. Meaningful accessibility includes access to network, technology, and skills needed to participate in online modes. As, you, as we've experienced a while ago, uh, there was a problem accessibility just a while ago because of technical difficulties. And you cannot, you cannot uh, control that. There are Especially if you are uh, we're doing online yeah. class. It's not working. Yeah. So alternative participation modes are valid alternatives only if students can effectively participate in all modes. So the thing there is you cannot opt for high flex if the institution, the teacher, and the students are not ready for uh, the concept on are they accessible enough. Okay, so that's the main question there. So high flex is more than just a high flex because the concept there is there are different types of high flex concepts like mode neutral way back in 2008 until 2018 in the flexibility accessible learning environment. I believe in the concept that problems um, creates opportunities. So with the problem in the pandemic, created opportunities for teachers and administrators to come up with different type of learning modalities so that we could give uh, the proper, proper learning to our students. So this is what we have uh, the, in the academy that uh, have come up with a different type of learning. Uh, open University is there, like the modular type of learning also, but it really gives you the opportunity to build something new so that it could cater to all types of students. So provides multiple options with student control over participation mode, states there. Provides multiple options, but perhaps no student control over participation mode. So it is divided into the types of what type of participation mode they would have to. So there are different uh, universities, especially in the US, who are using this type of high flex already. Okay. And then... Uh, let's go to the student faculty experiences. Okay, so, so this is what a typical high flex classroom would look like in any given week or the following for that matter. So you have your synchronous face-to-face -face students who are coming into the classroom, but as you can see, there are some students who would prefer asynchronous interaction. As I said, there are some students who are independent learners who can learn from their own and they would prefer not to go to school or they have this anxiety they, 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 that, uh, and, or they're more comfortable while they're in their, I know, uh, um, in the comforts of their home. So there are some students who would go from asynchronous to synchronous or synchronous to asynchronous. So depending upon their actually their, their mood or that availability for them. So we provide flexibility, the type of classrooms that they, they could have or the type of uh, learning modalities that would be uh, that they would feel comfortable with. So this is an example of one of the classrooms that they have there. Okay. So basically, into consideration of the COVID-19, uh, what will teaching in person be like? So students and teachers always wear masks, uh, but the problem is on the speaking clarity and the hearing ability. And uh, I guess we have to consider the social distancing. And uh, if, a, uh, if students are in, the, uh, in their respective rooms, they should stay there. Teachers are restricted to, uh, to be in front of the classrooms all the time and not go around. Sharing resources, is that also possible? One, one resource for each student should be considered. So one of the questions would arise, there, can online synchronous methods support interactive learning in the classroom? So students in class also in the class synchronous environment should also consider different types of methods. So uh, 
it depends upon the availability of resources as we talked about a while ago and the creativity of the teachers on how to would they create content where the students can learn in in both uh, asynchronous and synchronous face to face or online so there are different types of interactive ideas for hybrid and in class this goes like the live polling hybrid pair work group work class wide discussion detailed work collaborative note taking fishbowl jigsaw back channel and physical movement actually there are some here in zoom that teachers use to make um, the uh, online learning more exciting or more interactive. So uh, we have to explore on that as well. So in terms of the institution values, these are some concepts that we have to consider. What are some of the passing needs, oppressing needs we see in higher education in our current environment? These are some of the common needs many programs or institutions express, think about, which are part of your experience. The items highlighted may be specifically relevant for the administrators. So first is enroll more students that would increase the access. And there'll be more grad, uh, graduate more students and faster because of the efficiency of the delivery. Uh, support working students. So there is a support for them, uh, even though they're busy and they cannot control their schedule. Uh, availability for learning is always there. Uh, support busy faculty, travel related schedule. So even though faculties are in their uh, are traveling, uh, they won't miss their classes because of again of the flexibility of the time that they could be in their classroom or deliver the uh, learning uh, what the, the subject matter or the concept they have to give to their students. Reduce demand on facilities, do more with the same or have less space. So there's also, if the students have given the alternative to go online as well as teachers. So they are given, uh, what about this? Uh, because we have the option to stay at home also. We're in less, less uh, facility will be used by the teachers. Reduce impact on environment. Of course, that's the, actually that's one of the issues right now on the BPOs that they are being recalled in the buildings, uh, they have to report. But again, that's the issue on the commuting, commuting because of the, uh, of the traffic that is being caused. Leverage the power of hybrid environments, more learning opportunity, develop online teaching and learning expertise with built-in comfort of face-to-face -face environment as a backup. Allow students freedom to choose how they participate, partial, partial support for student-directed learning, Build institutional online capacity step by step, teaching and learning. Facilitate faculty development. Create new customized models of instruction using emerging communication technologies to support teaching and learning. So basically, the first step for this one is the, the institution or the administration, uh, administration support for the effective, uh, effective transitioning or effective delivery of the high flex learning. Next, after the student, uh, sorry, institution, we have the student's value. So the question would be, what are the what are some of the pressing needs we see in higher education in our current environment? There are some of the common needs many for institutions express, uh, and we have also the benefits for the students. They can choose when to attend class in person and when to attend online. They can use additional learning resources available from all modes for review at any time. They can have richer learning environment for that matter. Learn how to learn online without full commitment to only online. Well-designed options available when in class attendance and possible for convenience sake and improve access to learning. So the accessibility is not a problem anymore. So, so as long as the students can have access, they can learn. And for the faculty, there's no path for absent students. So there's no reason for you to be absent in class because as it is, uh, it's flexible learning. No, ex uh, if students can attend in person, they're expected to attend as an online student. Opportunity for deeper learning with more learning resources are available. Engagement with students between regular class sessions. Support lower enrolled classes with additional access to students. And also built in backup when class instruction is not possible. So what is a type of the new normal that we have for the hyperflex? If both face-to-face -face classroom and online instruction are possible and desired, 
we could have, we could practice physical distancing. HyFlex approach can provide an instructional environment that induces the number of students in the classroom and allows students to choose their mode. No one is forced into an environment they don't want to. So as I said a while ago, if they're not comfortable with having face-to-face, -face, it's okay. They can always choose what type of modality they, uh, they are uh, better to use to in learning. Okay. So if classroom seats are limited, a seat reservation system could be useful to find the flexibility aspect to high flex to fit the situation. In terms of instructional continuity, if, if a shift to fully online is mandated, course development is already complete. So we've already tried online, so there's no problem of that. But shifting from online to face-to-face, -face, eh, there are always the probability that some students will, uh, would still prefer to do online. So in terms of needs and opportunities, uh, what are they? So fewer students are allowed in class. Uh, prepare for possible reversion to full, fully online. So there's also a probability there that because of level two, level three, they could always go back to quarantine. Better serve students with varying needs for online access. Improve online experiences. So how to start with this design of doing this hyper, uh, high, hyper flex, uh, sorry, high flex learning. So you have to identify your overall course goals and the student learning outcomes and then the learning uh, specific learning objectives. After designing those, we have to design the alternatives for all those things. We have to take into consideration that the outcome or the objective are given for in-class or face-to-face -face students, or for those online who could do synchronous while the class is going on, they're online. And also those who, who does online, but they cannot attend the specific schedule for the class. So they are known as the asynchronous uh, students. And then continually designing with the content, the assessment and engagement that you want to do, again, with the face-to-face -face or in-class, and those online who could do the synchronous and online who couldn't do, uh, who are more with a synchronous type of learning. So there are some examples here that I give uh, that there uh, for that type of high flex learning. Like for example, one of the objectives after reading about varied approaches to writing instructional objectives, students will draft a set of instructional objectives over their own instructional project. So activity in class, students write out one to two objectives individually, then share in small groups, then discuss what they have learned and ask questions the whole class discussion. So in terms of online, same task as in class using web conferencing tool aside to break out room for small group discussion. For those asynchronous, students listen to the recording of the class discussion about instructional objectives, then draft a full set of the sexual objectives and post to forum, also commenting on the IOs posted by the peers. So students who do who, who do the asynchronous can still participate, but their participation is of course delayed based up uh, as compared to those who do the face to face. But still, they they can participate. So this is our example for peer review. So students draft an assigned paper and engage in peer review activity process in class. Students write a draft uh, of an assigned paper and post discussion forum. So as you can see, there's always a, a forum for discussion. So that, that also helps in terms of the um, interaction of students in the class. For the online, students write a draft on assigned paper and post a discussion forum. So it's just the same with the online asynchronous students write a draft and assign paper and post a discussion forum. During the week, they provide written comments. So they're given a week for the asynchronous. So actually, there's no difference. It's just basically the modality or the type that you would assign them. As I said a while ago, the creativity of the teachers would come in here in terms of accessing and being uh, uh, te all the technology and modes are all provided for them. Okay, so these are some examples. As you can see, session four, uh, sexual task analysis, school analysis. So for the students who attend the class in person, their class participation. But if you attend online, stated there, uh, there are also different type of uh, activity there. 
So you should have to give options for students whether they are face-to-face, -face, online, synchronous, or asynchronous. Okay, so another example. So for online and for assignments, uh, always do in a week. So you give them a week to do that. We have more time. So for student engagement interaction, so how do students interact with the content? Is this engaging for them? So that's the basic question. Always have an assessment of yourself on how did the engagement uh, happen? How do students interact with each other to support learning? And how do students interact with the instructor? Uh, there's always a problem with some students who fail to be updated in their classes. So that's the problem in terms of, again, going back to accessibility. So it wasn't accessible, the, the ones that you posted in the Google Classroom or any mode of uh, information or in the uh, media setup that you have for informing them, maybe FB Messenger or whatnot, is that that students are not aware, so they don't they don't check it. Uh, uh, they don't check it uh, on time, so they are uh, they are not aware of the uh, activities that they have. So engaging them and announcing and contacting them is really really a, a must so that they are they are always aware of what is happening so that the teacher can or the instructor or professor can give the content to the students properly and hopefully that's where the learning takes place so social presence communication relationship is 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 a must uh, for the cognitive presence construct and confirm understanding Instructor or the teaching presence uh, would have that instructional design, facilitation, and direct instruction. As you can see in the three circles that we have, social presence is very, very important. And also teaching presence and cognitive presence for the students. And all of this come together so we'll have the learning experience. So how do you do the uh, connections among the students? So there should always be a weekly reflection post online open and could be a forum encourage participation mode uh the concept about churn it's it's, it's a it's an alternative word for like uh for like they have uh, comments or chats form small group discussion within class and online uh synchronous students use online forums to capture the report outs from in-class discussion activities require peer feedback on draft assignments Subscribe all students to all discussion forums. Encourage participation of all students. So all students are required to give their commentaries regarding the activities. So that's one of the things that they have to be uh, required to do so that you can always engage them. And then uh, assessing learning. One of the important things is assessment. Be consistent. Students almost should have essentially the same testing environments. And this usually means our... Uh, all are taking online quizzes, tests, and exam. Um, is proctoring needed for quiz, tests, and high stakes exams? It's always yes. So you can always do some proctors on them uh, regarding how do you how do you monitor their uh, quizzes, tests, and exams. The students required to come to campus for tests, uh, but uh, again, for high techs, it's also is optional. You can do the Google Forms or 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 other ways of assessment assessment tools consider a shift to low stakes quizzes uh, quizzes tests and exams supplement or are replaced by authentic assessment so you can always do the performance uh, performance tasks that they, that they have to report to school one time so still um, physical presence still uh, is still a need for students in some consideration of what type of uh, requirement you'll be asking them to do Okay, so for professional faculty develop professional development, there are things to consider. For classroom teaching, effective, do you have the experience? Is it is it a good assumption? Uh, how do you uh, do you need to verify? How can you support improvement where it is necessary? So you always have to assess the effectivity of the type of uh, instruction or modality that you're doing. If some of the students are also participative or have great learning in the type that you're giving them. So you have to focus on that. Experience teaching fully online. So you have to consider asynchronous or synchronous, how effective students learn from them. 
uh, based from the grades that they have or the scores that they have gotten? Where are the gaps in skills, abilities, and resources? Experience teaching hybrid, so there we go. So high flex already should be considered. So from this, uh, how do we transition from uh, online classes going back to the face-to-face? -face? So there's still a possibility and uh, that some students would not go back and prefer online. So the high flex concept would uh, would also be useful for that. So uh, again, for full implementation of HyFlex, uh, there should be some workshop sessions that would, uh, uh, could happen to get started with the HyFlex. So you have to establish your goals and learning outcome, and you design your HyFlex in terms of content and assessment. Uh, engaging students within and across participation modes, implementing HyFlex, and also to consider your stakeholders in planning the HyFlex learning. So is it that time for change? Yes. So we must be ready for the change that is coming. The only thing permanent in this world is change. So planning for resilience. Acknowledge the need for dynamic stability. Be prepared to adapt flex. Change as needed to meet the current situation while keeping the institution on course for a long term. So that, that goes uh, kudos to all the teachers here right now who have adapted to the new type of teaching, specifically modular, online, synchronous or synchronous. So it's very difficult right now, but, but uh, the, the challenge is really there. But we have to, uh, as, as they say, we have to adapt to survive. So in terms of survivability, I, I guess we've, we've, we've done our part for the society for giving the type of education justifiable on the what the students need uh, at that time of pandemic. So there are major administrative decisions that should be included, deciding to launch HyFlex for the institution, enabling students to student, uh, schedule flexibility, managing workload. There's this uh, one of the tough um, discussion that we'll be having in terms of workload agreements, aligning support for students and faculty. So when you decide to do HyFlex, you could uh, conduct a feasible uh, feasibility uh, analysis in formal or formal, depending on the scope, on what would students prefer. Establish or validate the need to use types of delivery online and in classroom and do the cost-benefit analysis for that one. And students schedule flexibility. So there we go. So you have to communicate the approach that you'll be using. And there are four common approaches here. Treat all classes the same as, it for, uh, as if all were classroom-based only. Communicate options after enrollment. Split single class enrollment into two smaller sections, if that works for you. For multi-section courses, list one section as classroom, one section as online. And create class section type in the registration system. So it, it really boils down to the support of the administration with the faculty and the students. Managing work, faculty workload. So the major increase in faculty workload is usually developing the additional online courses. Of course, like for example, the materials, the activities it will be doing. To accompany the classroom course, there is often increased workload associated with facilitating engaged online participation throughout the course. For common ways, this is managed. So additional stipend, uh, course release, instructional design support, and doubling up teaching assignment. So it should align in terms of the student support, typical supports for fully online students, administrative processes and forms, technical support for resources like the, like the available network, hardware, software, online technical help 24-7, is it available for them? Advising and tutoring services, is it available for them? Additional decision-making support for students, should I participate online or in the classroom? So that's the basic question that you have to ask the students, so what would they prefer? But still, you have to consider that some students would have on a uh, face-to-face, like first grading period, second grading, they would opt for another one. So you always have to be open for that uh, possibility. And for aligning faculty support, learning how to teach effectively online, uh, instructional design assistance to so design an effective and interactive high-flex course. In-class supports depends on technology complexity, faculty technical ability and scale of class. Actually. The type of 
um, the type of interactions that you'll be having in your class depends solely upon how well do you manage the your, your technical ability. Like for example, are, are you well off in terms of using the Zoom or the Google Classroom and so on and so forth and other uh, modes. Reordering daily and weekly workload to include engagement with online students. Uh, changes are required. But still, we have to consider it to be humanitarian in an aspect. Humanitarian, which means that we also have to be considerate with our students because it is not easy to, to transfer or to adjust again to the new type of setup. As it was, it happened before from face-to-face, -face, we uh, all of us adjusted to the online teaching. So, so, ganun din. so we should be uh, very understanding of our students. So common faculty perspective. So most already using the learning management system and some interested in lecture capture up to 75%. So uh, these are some common concerns that you have to tackle if you're going to do the high flex learning modality workload. Uh, how do you do with that? Boundaries until what time? The workflow, the same students face every week, interaction, class activity, security, privacy, and plagiarism. So lastly, uh, to end my talk from David Warwick, uh, we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. And with that, thank you. And if you have any questions, just send in the chat box and I hope I did justice to the talk in the high flex learning in the new normal. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Paula Jan Thompson. Now we are opening the floor for questions. Please do send it to our chat box if you do have questions or you may unmute your microphones. So it would uh, we, we would know your um, questions. We could address it. All right. So we have one question from the chat box. Well, high flex would also mean phasing out some support staffs in the school, such as printing of test materials, books, publication, and etc. cetera. Uh, thank you for the question, Sir Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah I guess so. The, the, it would, but not totally phasing out, but minimizing because as I said a while ago, there's still an option for face-to-face. -face. So when there's an option for face-to-face, -face, there's still students attending the school who would need that uh, uh, test materials, books. But as we all learned right now, um, books are also available in, uh, are also con are converted into eBooks as well. So maybe minimizing some, but, but not totally um, eradicating, but because you still have to print some things, especially and sending it to the students. But I guess that's that's, that's part of change. Some of the some of our technologies are also being phased out because of the opportunities that have been arising in our society. You know, so yeah, I hope I answered that properly. Yeah. All right. Another question from our chat box we have here uh, sent privately. Um, how do we prepare our children or our parents and children? How do we know that they're guided with their uh, decision of which modality to take? I need, I need that uh, you have to have a sit down, really a good sit down talk and observation about your, your children. So you're talking about your children, no? So you, you would see their grades naman eh. Uh, if you see their grades in terms of online, uh, that they're, they're really, really, um, what do you call this? They're really having good grades, having this online. So you give that, that option to them. And also, as I said, they could feel it out muna. By first grading period, they could do face-to-face. -face. And if they're not comfortable and they you want to go online, you could also have the option. Kaya ngayon yung concept ng flexible, di ba? By second grading, pwede sila mag-online. Sasabihin niya, ah, mama, papa, ayoko na na mag-face-to-face. Ano, mag, uh, -face. Uh, gusto pa rin yung online. As I said a while ago, may dalawa akong anak. May, 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 uh, I have, I have uh, grade seven who, who is really waiting for the face-to-face. -face. And my grade five, 
uh, is really uh, ano, flourishing in online. Mas matataas yung grades niya. So doon pa lang, sa dalawang anak ko yun, na, na nakikita ko na, na yung isa, ah okay, so mas gusto niya mag face-to-face. So yung, yung understanding natin kasi, hindi lahat ng, ng sudyante have the same learning styles. So we have to respect that. So observations, talk it out, and especially mas maganda pag involve yung teachers, ay yung mga teachers nila. Para kasi yung mga teachers nila, sila mo rin nakakaalam po ano yung mas preferred na type of modality na pwede sa kanila. All right, sir. Thank you. Now, we would like to ask the audience to please um, send your questions. How do we conduct summative assessment in a high flex context? Um, as I said a while ago, you should prepare for the three uh, summative assessment face-to-face, -face, the typical one, and you have your in Google form for the synchronous, for those who are doing online, and also for those who are doing asynchronous. So I guess the preparation now, as we've been doing it before, is times two times three. Because even though you're going to prepare for one class, for one type of instruction, you have to prepare like, like two or three times. That's why the concept on the workload a while ago, I'm talking about, mas mahirap na kasi yung workload ng teacher mas malaki na kasi ang preparation mo hindi lang face-to-face, -face, ang preparation mo pa pati online. So in terms of summative preparation, mas yun nga, uh, uh, prep, uh, yung modality, prepare mo doon sa tatlo. So yun po yun. Sir? Ah, yes po, Ma'am Marilyn. Um, uh, sir, good afternoon. Am I Luen? Yes, sir. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sir Alden, and good afternoon, Sir Paolo. So I'm from the elementary, and my concern is conducting of the assessment because as we have noticed in the online, um, during the conduction of the test, we can even see some parents really coaching their uh, children. Yeah. So how are we going to conduct the test when in, we're in? We still have to observe fairness. Yeah, actually, um, uh, hindi lang po kayo experience niyan. I, 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 I believe that is uh, true all across because there are some parents who are really very competitive and who are really, uh, what do call this, ano yun? stage parents, kumbaga talagang ayaw nila mababa yung grades sa mga sudyante, so ay yung mga anak nila. <laughs> Yeah, but but the thing there is, yun nga po, um, we could ask the students, uh, kahit nga rin po ako, pag, pag, kahit nga uh, sa graduate studies, just to be, uh, just to share my experience, uh, online oral exam nila, may mga nagtuturo pa behind, marinig mo may bumubulong, sa akala ko ba mag-isa mo lang dyan? Kasi um, in terms of, ano, mag, mag, we, could shoot, we could put mechanisms in a way na uh, maglaya ka ng dalawang, uh, ano dito, uh, uh, what do call that? Uh, video, just to see them na sila lang yung mag-isa doon in front of the computer mechanisms. Pero in toto talaga, ang hirap po talaga yung i, ano yan eh, i, i, eradicate yung tanggalin yung mga parents na nakikialam. Pero on the other side of it, ito rin po, there are some teachers who are, who, there are some parents who teach better than the teachers then, when in terms of of the modular. Kasi pag minsan kasi nakikita lang natin on the side kasi pag teacher ka, ala, tinuturuan na yung bata, hindi na ano. Pero the thing there is, actually, mas nanututo yung bata kapag yung tatay niya or yung nanay niya nagtuturo, mas nagsising in sa kanya. So, I guess there's always advantages and disadvantages for, the, for that. But again, yun nga, the, the option for face-to-face -face is still there. So, mas control natin sila. Pero at the end of the day, Kung yung bata ay mas natuto sa ganong type ng modality, who are we to ano to to say na oy wag ganyan kasi right now with what's happening who's to say who can learn better yung mga bata let them alone do the youtube they can learn things on their own na and who are you to say na ito yung dapat that's what high flex is teaching us right now we the process may be different you could go the uh, ano, you can go to a road A, road B, road C, road D, but we all this we all uh, but the goal is the same. Kung saan yung patutungan ng bata is yung learning pa rin na parang parang niya natutunan yung bagay na yun. Uh, ang hirap din po kasi mamakailang pagdating sa mga parents na, na we, 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 we tell them not to to meddle kasi 
kahit anong gawin din mechanism natin, kung gagawa din sila ng paraan para makialam din sa mga grades sa mga anak nila, wala, wala rin po talaga tayong maano doon. So, uh, one sir, is face-to-face. Okay. We, we ask them to go back to the classroom. Sir, <laughs> follow-up question talaga. lang po, sir. Uh, sorry po, po. Follow-up question. Yes, okay. So, is it all right that, uh, because usually in our institution, we have uniform uh, system of uh, conducting tests, something like that. Um, mm. Is it possible that... Uh, Since grade school, um, you know, our children are really uh, younger now and they are still yeah. very young. Uh, is it possible that we can have our own way? Uh, what I mean is the teachers will be the one to decide, not necessarily that is coming. Uh, uh, always the directions should be coming from top because, you know, as um, grassroots, we know yeah. better because we are really into the classroom, dealing with the students. So is it possible that in our department, uh, we have to come up of a system wherein that is really applicable in our department alone? We don't have to follow, for example, uh, in high school, they are doing this one. So is it possible, sir? Mom, that is already been practiced. Uh, that's what you call academic freedom, that you have the freedom to teach, to yeah. Yeah. give what type of activities and to assess your students and and that is, that's very good right now because mm -hmm. uh, the number one thing is you are the ones who know your students very well so in terms of assessment it is you who can really determine what type of assessment they can have and right now in terms of the concept of flexibility it's, it's uh, even though the administration has said that this is the type of, of yes. assessment that you're going to go to it's still at the end of the day it is you who would say that yes uh, that student learned learned because of the assessment that I've given him, uh, the type of assessment I've given him. So, dun din po, ma'am. So, it goes back din po sa inyo yun. And you still have that academic freedom, ma'am, to really assess them in a way that you want it to be. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you for that answer, sir. Okay. Yes, po. Thank you very much. Now, we do have another question from the chat box. Isn't it taxing for the teachers to engage multiple audiences simultaneously? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is taxing because I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. Because right now, like you have face to face and the ones online, so you have to, you have to, especially if you're doing elementary and 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 I could just imagine pre LM, because pre LM students would have many questions. So you are dealing with pre LM who are face to face in the classroom and those who are monitoring online. So there's always question teacher. Teacher, teacher, teacher. So it's really taxing. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, uh, deny that. But as as it is, that's the concept of what I'm talking about a while ago. It's the workload because right now you have two classes. Now you have the online class and you have the face-to-face -face class, and you have to uh, take into consideration those students who doesn't attend online or face-to-face -face who are now having the asynchronous, who will who will give the activities after everything has been said and done. So. Yes, it is taxing. That's why I was I was pointing out a while ago. It goes back to the creativity of the teacher on how will how will she or he do do that type because it, right now uh, uh, high flex learning is open to everybody. You cannot deny them na face to face lang tayo. Dito lang tayo sa classroom. No way. Eh. Kasi na try na nila mag online. Para pag sinabi sa mas komportable ako online. Oh, and who are you to tell them na no? no. Because the option is given to them now. All right, sir. Thank you. Another question here. Yeah, it's really taxing because I think <laughs> I can just imagine you have to prepare yeah. like or you have to strategize two yeah. times, right? One strategy for those who are yeah, interested. Post face to face. Online, Another strategy yes. for those online. Yeah. Both. And then right. you have them and you have students asking, you have to assist them in their activities face to face. Are you gonna assist them those who are online? So the, the keyword there is strategy creativity so how do you do how do you do that all right oh. another another one i think this came from our teachers in the preschool to kinder for preschool and kinder two to five years old in high flex face-to-face -face classes is the teacher really supposed to be just in front of the class can they approach uh, for example physically uh, sit in front or beside the children thank you Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, for that teacher, uh, teacher Clarice, um, as I stated a while ago, that is for inter consideration of the COVID-19 because of the setup that we'll be having in the classrooms. Because um, as yeah, being a prophet teacher, I always tell my 
by students in terms of classroom management, you go around the class, especially for preschool talaga, that you have to really be there beside them to, to hold them in terms of especially pag may ginagawa sila activities required yan. But right now, because if the concept of the new normal, we have to abide for certain physical distancing and really have to do what is required of us. Pero, 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 there's still some considerations then, especially pag mga ganyan, how can you teach them how to write if you don't hold their hand? How to teach them to do activity if you don't touch them? I understand that totally. But that is how, uh, that is, uh, deal with the uh, ano, institutions, uh, protocol, DOH, IETF, kung paano yung ano nila, how, how would you execute that? Pero, uh, if the question is, is it pass, uh, is it okay for preschool? I, I think so, for them to learn, pero that the uh, the parents will also be aware that there is some <coughs> uh, physical touching that is involved in terms of not following some type of protocol because of the need for proper instruction. So it should there should be a clear communication among the stakeholders. Kasi mamaya kasi we go, if we're gonna implement the COVID-19 protocols na meron tayo ngayon, yun ang sinasabi, uh, physical distancing talaga. Kaya kung makikita ninyo yung design ng mga classrooms natin, talagang capacity-wise, uh, distancing talaga. So you still have to abide. Kaya nga po, we have to adapt to the new normal. Hindi naman po ibig sabihin na oh, uh, after pandemic, balik na po sa dati. Hindi na po. Kaya nga po yung concept kanina na hyperflex in the new normal. What is new normal? is adapting to pandemic type of setup. All right. Um, another question from our chat. We were receiving a lot of questions already. It sent directly. Hi, sir. Please correct me if I am wrong, but it seems that this model will spoil the students as they get to choose their way of learning depending on their mood. The burden is on teachers. Maybe I could add a question to this um, because we've been giving like options for the students online or face to face. Now, how, how does this benefit the teacher? Let me answer first the question. Will it spoil the student? Actually, if you're going to see it in the bad, sabi ko nga kanina, there's always the positive and negative of things. No, There's always advantages and uh, disadvantages of things. It's how you would see it. Um, yes, in some ways, it would spoil them. But if the, what we're after here, we're after here is the learning. It spoiled them in a way that they, they could learn. Isn't that justifiable? It spoiled them, they could choose. That's the option that they're giving them. Just like, for example, diba, um, I have students, kasi experience, I don't know if you have the same experience. No? Kasi there are some students, especially at the college level, na they have to take uh, subjects na sa open university kasi hindi offer sa SEM na yon. So may options sila na open university, pero mas pumapasa sila sa open U kaysa sa face-to-face -face classes. Pero kasi sasabihin ng mga class na, unfair naman yun, in-enroll niya sa open U, tapos pumasa siya. Are you out? I'm going to see you in Zoom. Tapos sa klase, face-to-face -face is more difficult. I guess that's that's the problem right now is the comparison. But uh, as I said a while ago, saan ba mas natututo yung bata? Where does the child learn better? Is it face-to-face, -face, synchronous, or asynchronous type of learning? Diyan papasok yung flexibility. So to the question of follow-up ni Sir, question ni Sir Aldrin, ano na po yung follow-up ni Sir? Yung question niya. How does this... Um... Up, benefit the teachers. Benefit the teachers right now. Um, as I said, yung uh, as I said from the one of the uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, from the PowerPoint a while ago. In terms of the teachers right now, you you uh, we are now like for example we are now focused on the students. Kung kung ano yung mas comfortable sila, where they are more comfortable to to be in. So, but the thing there is, kasi some students are uh, uh, ever changing in terms of their option. Eh, uh, pag minsan eh. uh, as I said, in terms of teachers, um, the burden is on us actually to tell you the truth. I don't do I don't do sugar coating if you can see. I don't sugar coat my I don't sugar coat my answer. I just go straight. Yes, it's very uh, uh the burden on us. But 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 right now it's all about adapting to change, diba? So yun yung, ano natin, yun, yung goal is to adapt to the change 
where our students can learn better. Yun po. All right, another one. All right, please um, mute your microphones if you're not going to ask the questions. Thank you very much. And then uh, we do have another question here. Is it not better to separate the face-to-face -face classes from online classes rather than having both types of classes to be handled by a teacher at the same time? Yes, I guess that's better, no? So separate your online class and your face-to-face -face class. But again, that is an option. Uh, as I said a while ago sa talk ko rin kanina, you can always do that option na uh, iba yung nasa online class because you cater them differently as you cater differently to those who are in the face-to-face. -face. But it all boils down to the workload. Who would handle the the online class and who will handle the face to face? Would it be the same? Uh, would be a different teacher? If so, if it's a different teacher, then how would be the assessment of that? Again, would that be unfair to those who are doing face to face and for those who are doing the online? But for the question is, would it be possible? Yes, it's possible. Thank you very much. Next, um, don't you think it is better to have one teacher assigned in face to face? Another for online and another for DLP, um, just like what we are currently doing right now, and not just one teacher for all three. If students opted from face to face to be online next term, then they could just transfer. Um, it's like having three loads in one. We are not darn. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I'm just reading everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's understandable. It's understandable, but the. Uh... But if you, if you uh, as, as I said, it, it, it's, it's about the stakeholders. If the administration uh, would allow that there's a teacher for face-to-face -face and there's another teacher for the online, another teacher for the asynchronous, that would be better. No, That would be better. That's nice. And if, if, if the administration supports it, and well, well and good, well and good. But what I'm telling, uh, uh, what I just talked a while ago is, is the possibility that if a teacher has in, in, in one class, is it possible that you have students who are face-to-face, -face, online, asynchronous? Yes, it's possible. But if the administration would provide you and have you a setup that have a different uh, that would have different teachers for that, then that's better. That that's uh, I, I would support that. I I know that would be a a, a a lesser burden for teachers. So I know I know preparation is very very difficult. A follow up question, po direct lang, Sir Aldrin. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, uh, by way of an addendum, in the tertiary level, if there are only 30 students or in a class of 30, and you give uh, them the freedom to attend online and face-to-face, -face, how would you give the respect and the idea of putting all the lightings, air conditioning units, when there are only three and side by side, there are 15 who are doing their uh, online learning. What happens to the school? How do you reconcile this? If I am a teacher in a face-to-face -face class, giving them the freedom okay you are 20 three would like to have a face to face 17 would like to have an online learning so if we opted to have the face to face class kawawa naman din ang eskwela with all the air conditioning units and all the and all the lightings when the government is clamoring for our uh, conservation merely because of the uh, the the oil price increases. So how do you reconcile this two? When in the online, if I may just say, it is not in our school. In the online, two or three who are our participants today, they will be offering, say, a particular subject. How many are enrolled in the branch at Bulacan? 20. How many are enrolled in the branch at Las Piñas? 22. How many are enrolled in Makati A? 20. How many are enrolled in Makati B? 30. How many are in Manila? Without batting an eyelash. 90 ang isa klase. 
nobenta sa online. With this high flex, wala hmm. naman akong gustong sabihin. Kawawa naman ang eskwelahan. Tatlong batang nagnais mag-online. Dalawang air conditioning unit. At walo na, na, na ilaw. Look how taxing that will also be to the teachers. At kawawa din naman ang eskwelahan. How do we reconcile all of this? Salamat po. Thank you for that question po, ma'am. So actually yun. Um, first of all, uh, there should be a feasibility study, as I said a while ago, feasibility study on what are the needs of the students and how what are, what are their options. As we all know, the classrooms that we have right now are the classrooms that we had pre-pandemic. So it was designed to cater um, students in full capacity. So right now, actually, kahit din po kami sa university namin, we are, we are realigning, retooling, and remanaging our learning uh, uh, um, resource materials right now. And we are trying to put up classrooms that have uh, TV with video so that if the teacher is discussing in front, nakikita na rin siya na nag-go online. Pero I understand yung, yung, yung clamor ninyo na uh, it is a waste of uh, uh, administrator's resources if iyo option ninyo na magkaroon ng face-to-face at mayroon mag online Kasi hindi naman lahat mag option ng online or face-to-face. Andun po yung, yun nga po eh, andun yung choice po nung, po nung bata. And with, with that, you have to really retool. It, it's, it's a... Um, it should be talked about with the stakeholders. Uh, Siyempre po, I am not uh, privy po with the, with the setup of your administration or organization, but I would do suggest that um, there should be a retooling in terms of the uh, materials needed in the classroom setup. Kasi, yeah, totoo po, nangyari yan. Like for example, in a class of 30, tatlo lang ang gusto mag-face-to-face. Probable po yan. And, and we cannot deny that. Pero ang tanong doon, can we deny them of face-to-face? Or, or are we to tell them na, huwag ka na mag-face-to-face, masasayang lang po yung mag- I, I think that's um, parang ano po eh, uh, magiging issue. Isa sa mga magiging issue na pag-uusapan ninyo. So it's it's all about talking it out with the stakeholders that are involved and readjusting everything sa mga classrooms and sa mga setup po natin ma'am. Salamat. Yes, po. Welcome po, ma'am. Welcome po. All right. Thank you. Another question here in the chat box. How can teachers help ease student anxiety in the transition from asynchronous or synchronous to in-class or face-to-face with considering all the changes from assessments? Yeah, actually, it says, uh, that's one of the main problems right now, mental health. Uh, when you ask me how can relieve anxiety, I, actually that's one thing um, our guidance counselors have been being a, a problem. Because I'll tell you uh, honestly, the pro, uh, the ratio and proportion of guidance counselors to the number of students is not really met right now. And if you go on, and, and if you're gonna really follow uh, yung mga students na would would uh, ask for a uh, guidance it would take a long time kasi ko konti lang naman talaga ang ano i don't know sir Audrey, no if if you have the same uh, if you have the same problem in the institution na ko konti yung guidance counselors in the number of students diba kasi mental health talaga ang problem in, in right now in terms of the students kasi there, there are so there are so uh, feeling protected in in their houses in their homes that they don't want to go out uh, and we cannot force that. Kaya nga we're doing this high flex to give them an option kung saan sila com- comfortable, where they're comfortable, where their comfort space is, at the end, kung mas natututo ba sila with that kind of setup. So, um, there should be a um, mechanism, support mechanism by the uh, by the stakeholders, the administra- administration, the teachers, um, the parents as well. Uh, in terms of uh, really uh, asking the child where, where he or she is most comfortable in, in learning. So, yun po yun. All right, thank you. Um, 
going back to the uh, topic of summative assessments, in a high flex class, what are the disadvantages and advantages of having uh, two sets of summative assessment, one for physical and a different one for online class? Well, uh, the, the type of test, actually, the, the type of test that you'll be giving. Because in terms of online class, the only thing that is very, very effective is multiple choice to be specific talaga. Kasi ako before, in terms of face-to-face, -face, I could give different types of tests. I could give identification, enumeration. No? I can really, really be creative in that. But but for online online exam, it's very difficult eh. It's, if you give identification, it could they could easily uh, answer it because the monitoring is not there. Unlike for face-to-face, -face, you can give different kinds of or types of tests. So in terms of the summative na ibibigay mo sa kanila, there's more freedom in terms of face-to-face -face rather than in on online. Ilan lang ang pwede mong gawin. Kaya nga that's the major change that I did with the type of uh, exam that I'm giving them. Mostly multiple choice. Kasi na gusto kong mag-identification, mag-true mag or false. Ano. But the thing there is, um, the, the, the possibility of them knowing the answer at once because there's no monitoring involved. So, yun din. So, maghihirap kang gumawa ng exam. Tapos, they can have auto answer afterwards so you're not really you're not really assessing what really intends to assess but but nonetheless multiple choice is one of the best um, type of exam naman actually but the most difficult to prepare the easiest to check but with the google form i think it's uh, the easiest na kasi naka auto ano naman na siya ka auto record na so yun, yun po yun siguro the different type of test that you'll be giving. That's the main difference. Advantages and disadvantages. Uh, advantages is that you can assess properly. Disadvantages is the limited type of exam that you can give. All right. Thank you, sir. And maybe my thoughts on this one, um, from, from the eye of a student, uh, how can, if we are given a separate summative assessment, how can we assure that um, the grades that were given to us are fair, right? Exactly. In terms of the different summative assessments given. Yes. All right. So do we still have questions sir. coming from our audience? Sir V? Sir yes, v, sir. I, I just yes. want to have a follow-up question regarding that. In line with that matter, um, Mr. Speaker, um, so how do we reconcile that? Because again, um, given given the idea that you were expounding on your talk a while ago, you are saying that there must be a consistency between the online and the uh, face-to-face in a high-flex context, right? Like what you are giving to the, to the physical um, or the on-site learning students must be similar or at par with your online students. So how do we reconcile given that in the high-flex, they are simultaneously done? So how can we assure the validity and the reliability of of the exam plus the fact that it would be valid and fair because again um it appears that and it seems that we are very limited in our choices of assessment in in the yeah. in the online setup yeah thank you actually yeah thank you for that question sir but uh, what we're saying is really really true what's happening right now but in in uh, to be what I call this uh, to be specific on what uh, what I'm talking about a while ago is what I'm saying that um, the, the question a while ago was what are the advantages and disadvantages you can offer actually as we have experienced before face to face we can offer everything but as 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 the thing there is that we have to adjust to the online setup so what are the assessment tools that we can do for the online so mostly mostly written. Mostly, as I said, multiple choice Google Forms, that, that's what they can do. So the, the, the major adjustment there is, is uh, being, being uh, aligning that type of assessment to those who are in the face-to-face. -face. But you also have to consider that there are, we are limited on the things that we can do online as compared to face-to-face. -to -face. That's, that, that's, that's the sad part. And... Uh, that's where creativity of the teacher comes in. So how can you make an assessment 
uh, assessment tool that could be congruent to the assessment that you're using face to face. So that's where the that's where the problem lies on. So for me to answer that type, we could we have to be more specific on the type of the content, the subject, and everything. For really to really uh, go into the details of that, but uh, yes, you're you're correct, sir, when you said that we have to be fair. Exactly, that's the that's the that's the uh, uh, that's the one of the principles a while ago that I talked about in terms of the high flex, being fair all across the modes of learning, the the way you you evaluate your students online, face to face, asynchronous, synchronous should be uh, there's a uh, uh, well this the fairness of that um, grading that you'll be uh, that you'll be using for them to to uh, uh, for you for you to give them no so uh, it's really really difficult talaga sir so i, I can <laughs> i can go into details talaga kasi um, it's really what do call this uh, specific of the type of subject and the content Sir, yes. sir, with uh, uh, if I may, uh, sir, sir Aldrin. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, po. So, just thinking aloud, I uh, remember that you mentioned with the idea of this hyplex absences on the part of the students may be uh, lessened, or the teachers will also consider only valid, valid reasons for them to be absent. Because in my case, when I was hospitalized, I never considered my sickness, merely because even in the hospital, you can meet them via Zoom. So in the same manner, if and when you have this online learning, the students will never be free unless for real, valid reasons and because of this you are simply giving me the impression also correct me if i'm wrong that those who would be attending the class via face to face i'm only human i really would give so much credit because of the hardship because of the time that they will spend and the idea of academic honesty i'll be seeing them that they are the ones who are doing it the monitoring will be there. Assessment will be a lot better. Tao lang ako eh. Tatlo lang yan. And so, the pain, the trouble, the uh, the expenses that they have incurred really would play an important role. So again, how do we do this? The students... Uh, Ano na, ha? at stake na yung academic honesty, lalo sa online. Totoo naman po yun, vis-a-vis the face-to-face class. And second to this, uh, how would you consider the criteria that can be used by the quality assurance? Paano kaya yan uh, maa-assess? ng ating paasko at pakukuha. I we will observe your face-to-face -face class. The mm -hmm. same subject and the same teacher allow us to observe the uh, online class. Meron pa yung susunod. What are the documents that you use in the online class? And how did you assess your face-to-face -face class? Diba, we are opening so many avenues that at the end of the day, si Maestra ang kawawa. Salamat. Yes, ma'am. Actually, thank you for that question um, in terms of quality control. Actually, kahit din yung mga assessors, accreditors po natin, adjust, nag adjust din po yung mga yan. Kung meron po tayo nag adjust mas nag adjust din po sila. Kasi, <laughs> opo, opo, totoo po yan. Kaya, kaya marami akong kilala mga accreditors na nag nag ano na nag giveaway na kasi they couldn't adjust to the online accreditation na ginagawa din but but still to the point of syempre um uh, maximizing learning that's our, our really our 
end goal, kahit anong institution guys, to maximize learning. And in terms of the setup that we uh, that we want to have in this case, um, uh, first the point pino point out niyo is in, in issue on absences. Yes, totoo yun. Because uh, if your activities are all planned out, there's no problem for absences, especially for asynchronous. You're giving them one week to do things, so you don't require them to attend. You just require them to answer. As it is, there are some students who really are who would really like that. Matter and there are some students who really do love that they go face to face and learn and study real time. But mm -hmm. there are some students who do well better din naman online in the comforts of their home because may anxiety nga sila or they learn better that way. So mm -hmm. that's what we have to consider. But absences, kasi before pre-pandemic, we do that naman talaga high flex eh. Kasi pag may mga sudyante po tayong absent, di ba we do remedial for them. Tapos we do uh, extra, what do you call this? Extra activity for them that they have missed. Kaya tapos sasabihin, ay, uh, naging challenge ka sa akin kasi dapat uh, I'm not doing this but dahil nga excuse yung absence mo, I'm giving you extra activity for that. So, but for now, it's, it's ano na, uh, it's legit that we have to do activities, those who will not attend our class. And um, for the quality assurance, yeah, because you, you cannot negate the fact that you can offer those possibilities depending upon the situation of your institution. If your institution can cater for those kinds and you are well enough, you are supported enough by the administration that you can cater to that, knowing that you have students that are abroad, they, they can go out and they, they, they cannot meet you on the set date and time, and that you have that capacity, accessibility, then the I guess the creditors can uh, should and must adjust to that type of setup that you have. It is it is them, and, and if it works for your institution, why not? Diba? So I guess um, maximum learning uh, is is the key. Is how would they learn properly in the setup that they have? So yun po ma'am. Salamat. Yes po. Welcome po ma'am. Okay, so another question po. Since we do have um, the question a while back of spoiling the students for giving them um, the the options to choose whether they want to be in the online the next week, um, uh, physical, is that possible? And then um, if we're going to take a look at it, how can our school provide guidelines in terms of um, ensuring that students are really studying at home? For instance, um, as of the moment, we cannot require them to turn on their cameras because it's a debt and order that we cannot do it. So how do we fix this one? Actually, I'm not in for that, not turning on their cameras. Ako kasi, whenever I have my undergrad, even my graduate school class, I tell them always turn your camera. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are joined here in the online class, that you are present. Uh, the only the only sense that we have is a sense of sight and auditory. We can hear and see each other na nga lang. And the the very minor detail na lang na turning on your camera hindi pa magawa so sabi sa lab, if you get a turn your camera you're considered absent but i i i, I don't i really I, because it's it's a mechanism for you to really know if the student is really listening or attend is really attending based from Kratvol's effective domain uh, which is respond uh, receiving and responding if if the the the, the very uh, minimal way of him acknowledging your presence is when you see that the student is listening to you. Yun na nga yung pinakamababang way na mabigyan kanya ng importansya. And turning on camera is difficult pa. I, I, I'm not in for that. But uh, for the question that on spoiling them on planning to choose, here's the thing. When it comes that the option is given that the face-to-face, -face, eventually, eventually, I don't know if you could correct me if I'm wrong. Eventually, if the students see that face-to-face -face is better off than online and asynchronous, wouldn't you think students would go back to face-to-face -to -face na knowing na mas okay pa pala siya? So you make your classroom in a face-to-face more enjoyable and more interactive than those doing online and asynchronous. Then eventually, they could go back and say, ah, okay, I would like face-to-face -face better now because it's, on, uh, it's the best option possible. 
But you're not limiting their option saying na, oh, wag ka na mag-online, wag ka na mag-asynchronous. Bawal yan. No, it's just be, giving the option. But make the best option possible would be face-to-face. I would really go for face-to-face. I'm better at teaching at face-to-face because I really rely on my students' facial expression, their body movements, and really everything that they're... Because as teachers, we are inter, in, uh, interpersonal uh, uh, people. We like to really interact. And that's one of the things that is hurting online learning right now. Because according to the three types of curriculum, we have the... Uh, academic curriculum, extracurricular, and the hidden. Yung hidden ang natatamaan. Yung hidden is the way they socialize with each other. They learn things on their own which they don't learn at home. Uh, that's the one thing that's really, really being affected right now. Students cannot learn the same way before as we learned before because there are things that is not taught in the curricula, but we learn from our, from our classmates and that's what they're missing right now. And that's why I guess if we could make it possible that face-to-face is be- the best option of all, then students would, would opt to do face-to-face. So it boils down again to the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, we have one. Yes, Miss uh, Dr. Neri. Okay, ako anak. Okay, okay Bob. We have one last question in the chat box. Then if we are we receive no questions and we're done for this session. One last question. Do you think, sir, there are subjects that are required to be taught face-to-face and there are subjects that could be taught online? Yeah. For me, for grad school, I'm better off online. Uh, for my PhD and MA classes, must, I, I'm, I'm better for them online. Um, there are some knowledge-based subjects, like for example, in, in my case, undergraduate studies, I'm teaching the major subjects in social studies. We're better on uh, we're better online. But there are some subjects that require uh, kinesthetic learning, practical, like for example, yun niya, uh, the, the ones being prioritized by the government, uh, nursing, uh, nursing courses, uh, subjects that are TLE to be specific, or PE. Actually, that's the main, very big problem are the PE teachers. Actually, uh, if, if the what, what, one, one uh, type of it's a pro teachers right now are who are really, really affected by this online are the PE teachers. I really give tip my hats to you guys on how you really executed your uh, online teaching with this type of pandemic. And but but I guess uh, if if you if you are really creative about everything and the way if you are passionate of your teaching, there are great pos- uh, uh, possibilities are inevitable. Everything is possible for you to do things, no? So kung kung ano lang kung creative ka lang talaga. So yun nga. So but unfortunately creativity is not taught. It's innate. But if you're passionate, so you could All right, you sir, could... I'm sorry we still received questions in the chat box. <laughs> This is really a discussion because this is the trend. So we really have yeah, to... Yeah, it's okay. It's okay with uh, I'm pretty sure this will not be the last webinar for hybrid um, learning. And pretty sure hybrid, high flex, sorry, high flex modality will also be included in our inset for the following school year. Yes. Um, uh, there, there is one question here. Uh, during, because for the context, during online, learning during the synchronous learning we've trimmed down some of the minutes of some of the subjects so for instance we we usually give it for an hour and 30 minutes uh in an online class we just give it one hour so that when we have all the subjects for the day it does not um uh, it does not uh give ice cream to our students now so um question would be is it the same time for for classes face to face and online classes same duration it would be it, it would be dependent upon your um topic or content but i i, I guess it's it's just the same no so if it's the if it's uh the consensus of all the stakeholders that subjects are to be taught one hour then, then it's one hour, depending upon you, what type of, uh, um, what, uh, how long your, your class would, would take, depending upon the scheduling. But scheduling is not, it's not normal at this high flex because as we've discussed a while ago, schedules are flexible. 
that's the thing about this this high flex it's flexible but for face to face they have to stick to the time allotted and those who are online but those uh, asynchronous it's they're given one week to do the activity depending upon the time available to them no basically ganito lang if you gonna if you want me to put put high flex in a nutshell it's about you watching netflix there are people who watch series at the time that they are lunch but there are people who wait for the whole series to end and they're going to watch it in one day but there are people who are like that people who 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 are better at doing things on time and who are doing things um in their own time so basically high flex is like that your learning is dependent upon the time your av- uh, available time and the type of learning that you're most comfortable with sir sir yes, may i uh, or just again an addendum i read in one of the articles two three weeks ago it is not also good for the learners depending upon their age ha, to be in their computer for more than one True. hour and 30 minutes True. the same with us if we are True. teaching for more than two hours lecture in the computer or via zoom your your eyes becomes a yeah. uh, theory okay. for the graduate school you would notice they may be very active because of the age mm-hmm. uh yung kanilang okay. yung patience pero yung mata din talagang yeah. nahihirapan din so uh we really have to consider also the health of our learners tama po kayo ma'am Kaya nga po sa klase ko, when I do my classes, I do, kunyari, my classes like one and a half hour or two hours, depending upon the time. I always do a health break. Health break for five minutes or ten minutes. I, I ask them to stand up kasi kahit din po ako, it's really tedious sitting for two hours. Talagang mamamalid yung pet mo. Tapos, we are so used to standing standing in front Correct. of the class. Yun mm-hmm. yung nawala sa atin. Naging parang office worker na tayo. Na mm-hmm. naka, nakaupo ko na for the rest of the day. So parang, oh my God, I did not sign up for this. But still, we have to adapt to that kind of what's available to us. So so yeah, to, totoo po yun, ma'am. Actually, meron pa po yung mga, ano, yung sa mga anak ko, binila nung asawa ko ng para sa mata, uh, radiation mm-hmm. glasses. Yeah, so sabi ko, baka pwede mo rin akong bilhan because we, whenever I have my class, kasi ganun din, uh, it takes ano din. So, tama po kayo, ma'am. It, it, you have to consider the time talaga. And it's really, ano. Pero kanil nakakatawa kasi we, we, we consider their, ano no, we consider their time on screen mm. in terms of classes. Pero, honest to goodness, uh, they're also doing time on screen when they're playing. <laughs> Pag naglalaro sila, mas mahaba pa yung time on screen din nila eh. Kaya nga, I do limit also my my ano, my ano children sa, ano, may, may limit din. A one hour, one hour din. Kasi we try to limit them in terms of the classroom setup. But then again, when they're alone, they play on their own. Two hours, three hours din naman pala. So parang, alam nyo yun, there's also, there should be a balance between the parents' type of discipline and the also. Oh, oh, oh. Kawawa din bata. And because yes. of this, <laughs> Tama po si Sir Aldrin in a class of MWF that is three solid hours. One hour and a half will be ju- uh, meant for our discussion. And then the other one mm-hmm. hour and a half, uh, just by way of sharing, I have labor and social legislations. One hour and a half. Marakakita mo ha, mga dalagat binata na yan, 18. But they, you feel that they are also tired and so the other one hour and a half would be for case study, look yes. at the case like this, well-celebrated case in obtaining yes. industrial peace. That's how we do it. Kaya, yes. to my mind, blended na rin. So yes. for them to, to ask uh, the idea of will you go for online or will mm-hmm. you go for face-to-face? Kasi we have the online na talaga namang sagaran po yun. And we have the assessment and evaluation of teachers' performance. Kaya talagang tama ka, ha? We really have to assess every now and then if learning takes place. Oo, pero talagang Mm-mm. there is a hard and fast rule. Uh, sabi nga ng kaibigan namin, doktor, si Dr. Dewitt, 
talaga yung kalusugan ng learner should yes. be taken into consideration. Huwag nga yung nagtatlong oras ka nga, eh, pag, pag graduation naman, duling lahat yan. <laughs> so, ma- if I may interject, um, actually, doon pa pasok yung concept ng humanitarian. Humanitarian Correct. kasi, ako mas, uh, in, yung eto, nung second sem, sa, sa master kasi namin January to May, I asked my chairman na bigyan mo ako ng morning class, yung klasiko morning schedule, sabi ko, because I'm trying to be, I, I want to outsmart other, other ano, kasi I don't want to be the one in the afternoon na. Kasi I had afternoon in my first sem, naawa ako sa masudyante ko because of the humanitarian reason that they're so really, ano na talaga, grogi na sila. And you have to be considerate about that. Kasi when you ask questions, even though you try to be interactive, parang ito, yung oras ko kanina, I want to do. This is the most unholy hour. Yung mga ang hirap magturo sa mga itong oras. Kasi kahit gano'ng kaka-interactive, creative, if your students really are not that or really tired already, you have to be, you, you have to take the cues na they, they don't, they, they, even though they want to learn, their body, their mind are really, really, ano na eh. Uh, grogi na, sabi niyo mga kanina. So, anong gagawin mo? Ipipilit mo pa ba? Siyempre, hindi na. Tell them na, o oh, sige, ganito na lang, mga activity na lang kayo, ganyan, ganyan na. Because you, you want, you are, you are, you are considering their health. Because Correct. you don't want to, you don't want to force learning to them. So, sabi Correct. nga ni ma'am, ma'am kanina, nung nagtanong, uh, are we having that type of assessment? Opo, may academic freedom kayo. At yun yung napapansin yun sa mga bata. If you really see to it that they're not ready for learning, who are you to force learning on them? So that's the problem. Opo. Yeah, thank you. Opo. Opo After opo. all, let's make learning enjoyable. Yes, let's po. That's the main goal of teachers, to make learning enjoyable and not for them to hate it. Ayoko na mag-aaral, ayoko na sa earth, sa bilila kasi masyadong pinipwersa. Kaya maging ano ka rin sa kanila, you should have cues, maging sensitive ka rin sa kanila kahit na online, makita mo na wala na nagsasalita, wala na gano'n. Ah, okay, pagod na itong mga ito. So you have to consider them. So humanitarian yeah. aspect na po papasok doon. 